What's up, welcome to blockchain? <laughs> welcome to blockchain tech and finance with me, Ken, your host. Please do subscribe, turn on the bell notifications. I have all these article links in this 97th episode of blockchain tech and finance in the description box below on these videos. Uh, What's up, welcome to blockchain tech? All right. Welcome to blockchain tech and finance with me. Monitor is working great. Volume is working great. Let's go. Uh, throw your chats in there as well. What do you think uh, you'd like to see here covered in the news or what's trending? And you might just see it right here up on the stream. All right, so let's go right into it. This is from the Times of Israel. Israeli blockchain firm develops a fire prevention tech to thwart FTX style fraud. Starkware valued at $8 billion gathers 700 crypto developers in Tel Aviv to explore its tech, which speeds up transactions and is meant to make it impossible for exchange exchanges to loot funds. It's by Sharon Ro, uh, Robrell, writer reporter for the Times of Israeli. Uh, Israel, I mean. With the collapse of the bank corrupt, a crypto exchange FTX still sending shivers through the industry and fueling consumer mistrust, an Israeli multi-billion dollar startup is making its uncheatable blockchain transaction technology available for mass adoption in hopes of preventing the next fraud scandal. Netan uh, Netanya based Starkware which is valued at $8 billion, is the developer of a technology that compresses and speeds up blockchain transactions. Israeli computer scientist Professor Eli Ben Sasson is the mathematical brain behind the Stark technology, which is a proof system based on crypto, uh, cryptography and modern algebra, powering its two networks, Stark X and the blockchain internet, called StarkNet, used to uh, for blockchain applications and processing transactions. Isn't StarkNet like something from uh, um, Iron Man? Um, something like that, Stark. I don't know. Really. Anyways, the blockchain startup this week gathered a crowd of about 700 crypto developers and coders from around the world in Tel Aviv, where Ben Sasson, or Sasson, co-founder and president of Starkware, announced that the core software powering the networks will be um, – let's pause this. Sorry. Uh, will be open source, meaning that all – that it will be able uh, will be made a public good. It can be used as an infrastructure for all the things that can be develop, uh, deployed today on blockchain, such as payments, exchanges, gaming, NFTs, or non-fungible tokens, voting, and governance. Visa Inc., the credit card firm, is trying to out the tech for making automatic crypto payments. Starkware says that its technology is geared to make blockchain scalable for mass adoption, handle more uh, handles more transactions than Bitcoin. We're seeing that uh, the Stark technology, which most people haven't heard of, but which uh, will soon underpin the apps we all use, becoming public property, said Itamir, uh, co-founder and CEO of Argent, Ar Argent, a company that built a smart wallet using StarkNet. This is huge. It's driving the growth of a big community of people from all over the world who are excited to build on its infrastructure. We're collectively saying, let's shift our paradigm in crypto from please don't be evil to the tech means you just can't be evil, said uh, Les, Su Les Suisse, Les Sui, who was one of the speakers at the blockchain event. Starkware said the gathering marked the largest event on new crypto tech since, FT since the FTX scandal and focused on exploring blockchain infrastructure that promises to make it impossible for crypto exchanges to misappropriate funds. Blockchain, the technology that underpins the crypto underpins cryptocurrencies, have been suffering from reputational damage since FTX co-founder Sam Bankman Fried was charged with illegally diverting massive sums of customers' money, customer money from his cryptocurrency trading platform from for lavish real estate purchases, political donations, and sh uh, risky trades without the knowledge of investors, customers, and most employees. A lot of people. Um, Turn all these ads off. I can't turn that one off. Uh, it's for Bitrix. A lot of people are now talking about things like smoke detectors for the kinds of frauds that went on allegedly at FTX. Ben Sasson, or Sasson told the Times of Israel, our technology is better than a smoke detector. It is a fire prevention mechanism. It does not allow those who use it to misappropriate funds of their users. Uh, blockchain is the database technology underlying Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies allowing for the use of peer-to-peer -peer payment systems. It runs by recording transactions as blocks that are updated in real time uh, on a digital ledger. 
without a central rec record keeper. Many entrepreneurs and computer scientists see enormous potential of using blockchain for real-world applications as money and other assets can be transferred from person to person without going through a central authority. Cryptocurrencies are digital currencies that can be exchanged between people without the involvement of intermediaries like banks or governments. Blockchain is a distributed public, le public ledger that allows these cryptocurrencies to change hands without someone making digital copies of the cryptocurrency of the currency or other tampering otherwise tampering with the record of data or ownership we live in a period in which more and more of our financial interactions are mediated by a small number of very big companies or banks and there is a growing understanding that it's not good that all of our money flows are run through Google Pay or Visa or banks that all of our social connections are run through Facebook or Twitter or Instagram said Ben Sasson what blockchain does is really allow us to return to the peer-to-peer -peer nature of social and economic interactions but do so over the internet there are no federal reserve uh there is no federal reserve of bitcoin there is no chief banker for stark or any of those these protocols these are decentralized protocols and this is the beauty of blockchain he added starkware was co-founded in 2018 by uh ben sasson ceo ori kolodny Michael uh, Riabzev, Riabzev and Alessandro uh, Chiesa, Chiesa, Chiesa I don't know. in May last year, the startup raised, raised $100 million at a valuation of $8 billion in a Series D funding round that was led by Green Oaks Capital and in, in Kotu and included Tiger Global. That's up from $2 billion valuation at its last fundraise in November 2021. According to Ben Sasson, what happened at FTX and other and with other similar catastrophic failures is that people handed over control of funds to the exchange and were promised that they wouldn't be misappropriated. Now our technology uses the blockchain to enforce self-custodial -cust uh, trading, meaning that customers working over our technology always are in control of their funds, so it's impossible to misappropriate funds over our technology, he explained. StarkX and StarkNet are also called Layer 2 networks that run over the Ethereum blockchain, which anchors their, uh, their security. They have processed more than $800 billion in transactions and provide the infrastructure for Immutable X, a developer platform for Web3 games, so we're a fantasy sport, uh, sports gaming experience based on NFTs. And DYDX, a decentralized exchange for the trading of crypto derivatives, the StarkNet ecosystem has the potential to get the next billion people using crypto and enable people to get started with no uh, te technical knowledge because we are making that leap into an affordable and uh, friendly user experience, said Madi uh, Lavi, founder and CEO of smart contract wallet provider Bravos. We can begin, br uh, we can bring this intuitive and simple experience to what we call self-custodial wallets, meaning crypto, which is fully in your control and nobody can get their hands on your funds. It gives more people the confidence to use self-custodial solutions and not to default to centralized players like FTX and others, Lavi said. Ben Sasson is not too concerned about the bad reputation of the cryptocurrency and blockchain space often um about the yeah often suffers from saying that it is only natural that be, uh, because of its potential and hype that it has attracted unfair share of bad actors in quote i'm not worried about the image i think more and more people understand and now know that the core technology is really robust and here to stay ben Sasson noted it's not blockchain that caused the collapse but it is the companies that were either fraudulent or just very negligent and misappropriated users funds uh, he's also further said that crypto uh, the crypto crisis draws parallels with the dot-com shakeout of the early 2000s of which companies like twitter inc and facebook eventually rose um, in quote going forward i believe blockchain will be a strata used for social and financial interactions and agreements said ben sasson the number of followers on twitter and instagram meaning your um, social persona will be your own one day on blockchain and your financial transactions and your credit history are not going to be owned and maintained by some external parties data they will be yours proven by you on a blockchain so that's that right here for israelis blockchain firm develops fire prevention tech to thwart ftx style fraud uh, starkware and stark x and Starknet. All right, so let's keep going here. Crypto news, 11 best crypto courses for trading and education in 2023. Uh, the industry tech talk section features insights by crypto industry players and is not a uh, part of the editorial content of cryptonews.com. Uh, learning, learning ins and outs of how cryptocurrency works may be inti intimidating to beginners, which is where online courses can help. With that in mind, we have ranked the best cryptocurrency courses for 2023. 
Um, is there a writer? This is from Kane Pepe. Pepe? Writer reporter for Crypto News. Uh, crypto and blockchain courses give investors high quality training on everything from advanced trading strategies to understanding technical analysis. Read on to find out more. The best crypto trading courses for 2023. And number one, Jacob Crypto Barry Discord, leading community to get help and tips on trading. Uh, Bit Degree, the best cryptocurrency course to earn while learning. Uh, Block Geeks, blockchain courses with expert team with an expert team of teachers. Let's see, in fourth, uh, Blockchain Council, Blockchain and Web3 uh, Certifications for Crypto, Metaverse, and NFTs. Udemy, education platform with over 213,000 online video courses. Piggybacks, access numerous courses on crypto trading and technical analysis. An upskillless global online learning platform with interactive classes. We got Rocket Fuel, interactive membership-based crypto courses. Learner's Point, online academy with techniques and tools to trade and mine crypto. We got 101 uh, blockchains, variety of courses offered to learn auction, uh, actionable skills. And MIT Media Lab, learning about digital signatures, hash functions, and more in six weeks. Uh, that's very interesting to me, this MIT Media Lab. As you can see, there is a plethora of different educational platforms to sift through when looking for the crypt best cryptocurrency courses. Read on for more information on each. So obviously we got uh, Jacob Cryptoberry Discord, leading community to get help and tips on trading, is a leading YouTuber trader, uh, YouTube trader that has racked up hundreds of thousands of views on his videos for more than, uh, and more than 10 k, 10 k subscribers by offering trading insights, tips, and crypto alpha. Although this is not strictly an education course, crypto traders and investors will find both Jacob Cryptoberry YouTube channel and associated Discord group to be a hugely useful source of information. Uh, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm just, I'm just skimming through these, right? So all these articles in the des description box below, you can read through them at your own due diligence and further research, uh, research as a resource for yourself. Uh, many scholarships and reward-based learnings. Uh, learning are only two of the aspects that make BitDegree the best crypto trading course for 2023. This is BitDegree. The platform has its own native currency, BDG. When investors enroll in BitDegree crypto online courses, they will receive digital currency tokens as a reward in the form of BDG distributions. Um, additionally, students can obtain these tokens by applying for micro scholarships. Uh, students will receive BDG token in exchange for every authorized course they complete. Uh, students looking for a free crypto trading course won't be disappointed. The platform offers a wide variety of free crypto trading, cryptocurrency trading courses as well as paid ones. And additionally, BitDegree offers gamified education to give students a more engaging experience. This also allows them to interact while learning. Uh, so you got e-learning. Uh, gamification there let's see block geeks expert blockchain course with an expert team of teachers uh, this is uh, blockchain ethereum and hyperledger accelerated online courses are available from block geeks this is one of best cryptocurrency courses uh, uh, pr uh, course providers for cho of choice or for choice um, hyperledger that's something interesting to me right there uh, there are over 1600 classes and courses to choose from the platform offers one weekly live lesson taught by a block geeks teacher this includes test assignments and projects and unique non-fungible ERC-721 token serves as proof that the investor has completed their respective BlockX program. So it's a smart contract, basically NFT of a certificate. That's cool. The Blockchain for Business uh, Accelerated course teaches non-developers about the principles of digital ledger technology. This includes its use cases in retail, health, finance, and more. Let's see, Blockchain Council, Blockchain and Web3 certificates, certifications for crypto, metaverse, NFTs, and more. Uh, this is one of the top sites in 2023 for crypto day trading courses. The platform also offers crypto courses aimed at value investors, developers, analysts, and more. Uh, the council, the blockchain council has created a variety of unlimited learning subscription options. These online cryptocurrency courses are all industrial uh, industry oriented. Uh, that is to say they are based on the functional and development elements of various technologies and centered around blockchain they also include nfts the metaverse cryptocurrency and web3 courses here cover cryptocurrencies and blockchain for businesses as well as uh, developing them additionally the blockchain council offers certification courses from on understanding the technology the duration of the crypto trading courses with regard to the unlimited learning option is a 12 is 12 months they are priced between 349 dollars and 700 dollars respectively or 699 just kind of rounded out to 700 are also and also include options for developers there are also numerous other certifications and degrees with various prices and durations let's see udemy education platform with over 213 online video courses udemy offers some of the best cryptocurrency courses for beginners intermediaries and experienced traders alike one example is the complete cryptocurrency and bitcoin course which teaches to students how to create profitable trading strategies carry out technical analysis and more all should help investors find the next bull run coins 
Um, there are also advanced options which include swing strategies and crypto trade uh, day trading courses. This covers short selling, risk management, technical analysis, how to read an order book, and more. The mastery option is one of the best cryptocurrency trading courses for those who want to become professional investors. This includes mining, how to find the hottest crypto, securing investments, and more. Unlike the previous mentioned platforms, Udemy doesn't offer interactive crypto trading courses, only videos. That said, investors can choose from over 213 online video courses. Uh, piggybacks and ac uh, access numerous courses on trading crypto and technical analysis uh, and how to use trading view yeah it's important as well how to use trading view the best cryptocurrency trading course for beginners offered by this provider consists of 49 lessons it is priced at 297 dollars this is called the ultimate cryptocurrency trading course um let's see it includes more than 50 videos that take investors from the basics all the way up to advanced techniques and technical analysis the course comprises how to read candlestick patterns a trading view tutorial chart time frames and how to draw support and resistance and much more students can pay in four monthly installments of 97 dollars uh, installment if they wish let's see upskill set global online learning platform with interactive classes um, this is one of the best for those who don't who want to get started for free, the platform has a limited time deal as of writing. Students can re try out the cryptocurrency uh, course online, previously priced at sixty nine dollars, uh, basically seventy dollars a month, free of charge with no commitment. Um, let's see, is four weeks it includes it includes eight lessons with uh, toolkits included. Students who complete the course will be given a diploma of certification. Lessons will cover how to use the MT four platform, mitigate risk, and conduct technical analysis. There are uh, there are only so many places available for each crypto course as such investors need to register in order to partake in this free online offer we got rocket fuel interactive membership based crypto courses uh, allows small businesses corporations and students to learn about cryptocurrency trading from seasoned investors the start uh, starter crypto uh, trading course costs 47 dollars per month and includes access to a wide range of weekly analysis videos it also includes a crypto newsletter a lot of educational content surrounding blockchain technology additionally rocket fuel offers a premium option at 77 dollars per month there's also an elite plan which costs thousand dollars basically on an annual basis investors can test the course of their choosing free of charge for seven day period rocket fuel says its goal is to provide the knowledge and assistance necessary to become an expert in cryptocurrency trading learners point online academy with techniques and tools to trade and mine crypto um, let's see blockchain and you know, i'll note something from here we got to keep moving this along uh, there's lessons on margin trading lending how to spot scams fundamental technical analysis market site uh uh, psychology and much more does say psychology or psychology i don't know the crypto related courses at learners point include those focused on bitcoin blockchain development and more most courses run for four or five weeks enter a name email and cell number to find out more on their platform 101 blockchains offers a course of the uh, offers one of the best cryptocurrency courses online for newbies who wish to familiarize themselves with metaverse technology the intermediary metaverse technology Intermediate Metaverse Technology course helps students learn how to use the tools needed to create a virtual universe. The course covers editors, UI hardware, robots, and much more. Students can access over 40 crypto and blockchain related courses by signing up for basics, uh, a basic subscription. Now uh, let's see, the includes crypto compliance fundamentals, tokenization, DeFi, quarter development, Ethereum technology, and an introduction, introduction to DeFi and many other subjects. The price starts at $25 per month charge annually. Let's see, MIT Media Lab, learn about digital signatures, hash functions, and more in six weeks. This is a leader in technological uh, technical education worldwide and offers one of the best cryptocurrency trading courses. It uh, should appeal to many investors as it covers the market exchanges and trading in great depth. The MIT crypto course is six weeks long and students will be required to spend seven to 10 hours a week on it. Each module will cover a different topic. For instance, in week one, the students will be taught about the basics of Bitcoin and why it was created. Other modules include ICOs, dApps, and smart contracts. There are six modules in total. It costs $2,800 and needs to be paid in two installments of $1,400. Um, interesting, but um, that's a high cross cap. I think you can probably find a, a lot of wealth of learning information for free uh, by avoiding this, which could be similar to uh, what you could learn here, to be honest. To be honest. Um, so, yeah, what can you learn from Trader? Uh, yeah, read through this. Uh, read through this because there's a lot more information here. Um, a day trading, crypto scalping, dollar cost exchange, uh, crypto trading, bot trading, how to use a crypto wallet, et cetera, et cetera, on and on. Right here from uh, 11 Best Crypto Courses for Trading and Education in 2023. We got to keep this moving along.
Coindesk, Kraken's head of strategy, our business felt our business felt crypto winter's chill. It's from the business sector by Fran Velasquez. Thomas Perfumo said uh, the firm has not been insulated from the broader economy. Here's what he said the exchange wants to do next. We got a video there if you want to watch the recap and watch the video. Even Kraken, one of the largest uh, centralized crypto exchanges for by trading volume, hasn't been immune to the global economy shift trend, said Thomas Perfumo, its head of strategy. We're not insulated from the broader macro and economic environment, told, uh, he told Coindesk TV's first move around Tuesday, adding that crypto winter definitely had an effect on the business. Earlier this month, crypto uh, currency exchange Kraken closes Abu Dhabi office less, this, uh, less than a year after it obtained a local license to operate in the in Emirate. In December, the exchange said that it was leaving Japan by the end of January. Uh, he said that Kraken's Abu Dhabi and Japan offices were small parts of the business. Now the company is looking to hunker down and focus on the big core parts. Instead of op opening a large number of regional offices, Kraken is limiting the depth of our services, he said. So in some cases, we might not offer uh, access or funding with the local currency, he said. However, you might be in a particular region where if you have access to Bitcoin, you can still deposit that Bitcoin to Kraken and use some of our other services where it applies. San Francisco-based exchange founded in 2011 serves millions of users in over 200 countries, according to CoinMarketCap. Kraken is looking to expand in Europe and North America. Um, he said Kraken is now looking to focus and narrow its scope to uh, parts of the business that are likely to drive the greatest amount of impact. And we're focused on long-term vision to increase and accelerate the adoption of cryptocurrency. And we're focused on delivering the great, a great client experience. In the meantime, Perfumo said he's, he added, Kraken is constantly focused on earning our clients trust every single day, day in, day out through things like proof of reserve, even before it matters. So proof of reserve is like that. They actually have backing of the, of the funds of the cryptocurrency exchange because FTX obviously like laundered tons of money everywhere. And there was no actually proof of reserves. They had no money and that's why everyone's out and that's why they're bankrupt. And that's why the big, um, that's why articles like this are rolling out. Proof of reserve. P-O-R. Coindesk. In opinion, crypto long and short Bitcoin's golden cross explained this is uh, this much talked about technical indicator has value yet doesn't tell the whole story. It's from Glenn Williams, Nick ba Baker and Todd Groth, writer reporter for uh, Coindesk. This week, Glenn Williams Jr. addressed one of the hotter debates in cryptocurrency at the moment, how traders should feel about Bitcoin and Ether possibly achieving a golden cross, a popular indicator from technical analysis. Then Todd Groth, head of index research at Coindesk Indices addressed how hugely bullish a wide range of assets have gotten where the Federal Reserve fits into this. Uh, so says Nick Baker, a golden cross sounds important for crypto traders, but is it? Many of the crypto investing realm are excitedly worked up as Bitcoin BTC nears the vaunted golden cross. For those unfamiliar with the price charting technique, a golden cross happens when a shorter term moving average often the 50 day cross crosses above a longer term one, frequently the 200 day. It's a fairly common indicator often used by technical analysts viewed as an indication of a newly forming bull market. As a technician uh, myself, moving average crossovers are certainly something I pay attention to. Why is it thought provoking? It puts the current moment into a bigger picture perspective, promoting, uh, prompting you to ask what has changed in the short term to accelerate price movement? And is this something I expect to carry on? But how good is it at a forecasting tool? It's one of the, uh, it's one thing to identify a moving average crossover in state. It, it is, uh, <clears throat> this is bullish. It's something entirely different to see if it actually has been. As I examine the history of Bitcoin, what stands out to me uh, most is just how few times a golden cross has occurred. Since January 1st, 2015, there are just six instances when a 50-day exponential moving average EMA crossed above the 200-day EMA. Exponential moving averages give higher weight to more recent prices, whereas simply, uh, or whereas simple moving averages equally weight on all data points. The use of one versus the other is a matter of personal preference. It's even more rare for Ethereum's ETH, which has experienced just three golden crosses since 2017. But both are doing, close to doing it again, with BTC 2.4% away from one and ETH 2.1% away. The point in looking at new at them now is to determine whether the assets are approaching something worth paying attention to or whether it's simply something to talk about. The results are interesting. Uh, following a prior 50-day, 200-day golden cross, uh, day golden crosses, BTC went 
on to gain 4.4% in the ensuing seven days and surge 9.6% in 30 days. You can't look at those returns in isolation though. What does BTC do on average across all seven and 30 day periods? Worse than ju uh, just after Golden Crosses adding 1.6% and 7.5% respectively. It turns out there is in fact a edge historically even uh, oh, sorry, when those moving averages cross, the best 30 day return happened when BTC soared 67% in April and May 2019 uh, following a golden cross. The worst period was uh, the 18.2% loss in May and June 2018. For ETH, the second biggest cryptocurrency by market cap, trailing only BT, uh, trialing, trailing only BTC. Golden crosses have not been a bullish indicator. Average seven and 30 day results were losses of 2% and 8% respectively. Uh, so I'm going to skip over, keep going here. Uh, let's see. Taking a step back, though, it is striking, striking that for that for four of the five assets reviewed, all but ETH gains, respectively, 30 uh, were positive 30 days following a golden cross. In Candor, I wrestle with the significance of the golden cross for crypto, given debates around causation versus correlation. I'm also of the opinion that the traditional 50 day to 200 day moving average time frame uh, may have more acceptable uh, applicability in traditional finance than uh, in this new frontier of digital assets. Uh, so says Glenn C. Williams. So what's the deal with the rally following the bloodbath of 2022? Those not paralyzed by shell shock uh, will be extremely bullish and loving it. The Coindesk market index CMI, our be uh, broad benchmark of the cryptocurrency market is up 40% in 2023. Bitcoin BTC is up 37%. Even Solana Soul has surged almost 150%, rebounding after falling hard in an aftermath supporter Sam Bankman frieds downfall. Um... I'm going to keep going here. Um, you know, how, how soon is now, you know, you know, it's just kind of, I want to stick core to, yeah, it's going off into, you know, let's go into the takeaways. Um, now nah, actually let's skip that. That's something different, completely different. Um, I think this is actually a whole different article. I think they just kept, kept putting this into an article here, but yeah, that's the opinion on uh, crypto long and short Bitcoin's golden cross explained. I think um, hopefully there's some understanding there in what this article explained like that. Basically, financial gains if you're uh, trading is what it's speculative of for this Golden Cross. Helen Parts, writer, reporter for Cointelegraph, uh, writing this article, CoinGecko and 21 shares proposed global crypto classification standard. The new crypto classification effort aims to help investors and regulators spot potential crypto failures like those seen in 2022. Uh, I want to see if they have some key points here. Um, Let's see. I might just do the opening here and continue on. Uh, major cryptocurrency data aggregator CoinGecko and crypto investment firm 21 Shares have joined forces to launch a global standard for classifying various crypto assets. On February 8th, CoinGecko and 21 Shares released a global crypto uh, classification standard report proposing a uniform method to categorize crypto assets. The effort aims to help investors and regulators better understand the specifics of each asset class in crypto, including potential failures like those seen in the by the industry in 2022. Since Bitcoin inception around 13 years ago, thousands of unique crypto assets and protocols have emerged, each with unique characteristics and different value propositions. Carlos Gonzalez, researcher and analyst at 21 Shares parent firm 21.co, told Cointelegraph, adding, in quote, unlike traditional financial assets, crypto assets can be very dramatically can vary dramatically in nature, both as it relates to the asset itself and the protocol behind it. Um, at the time of writing, there are more than 12,000 diverse crypto assets listed on CoinGecko's website, with each having its unique characteristics and features. CoinGecko and 21 Shares classification standard is based on three categoriz uh, categorization levels, differentiating these thousands of assets by stack, market sectors, industries, and taxonomy. First level dubbed crypto stack breaks down crypto assets into classes like cryptocurrencies, smart contract platforms, centralized applications, decentralized applications, interoperable blockchains, and others. The methodology only refers to networks or protocols in the first two levels, not underlying, not the underlying token. Uh, the second level called marking, market mapping by sectors and industries further divides cryptocurrencies by segments like infrastructures, metaverse, and decentralized finance, DeFi, as well as groups like payment platform, lending, developer tooling, and others. As some protocols might fit into multiple industries, the methodology attempts to place the assets in the most relevant category in such cases. In the third level, taxonomy of crypto assets classified crypto assets according to related assets superclass based on the cryptocurrency taxonomy system proposed by crypto analyst Chris Bernisk in 2019. Bernice's Bernice system allows Robert Greer's 1997 paper, What is an Asset Class Anyways? Categorizing crypto assets across their superclasses like capital assets, consumable or transferable, uh, transformable assets, 
and store of value assets. That's interesting. Uh, some of the examples of the store of value asset ca uh, category include Bitcoin, Monero, Zcash, and Dogecoin. This type of crypto asset cannot be consumed, nor can it generate income. Nevertheless, it has value. It has a store of asset value than proposed classification standard assets. Um, actually, uh, Bitcoin with the new Ordinals protocol is maybe uh, changing this uh, that it can't be consumed nor generate income. Uh, let's see. Uh, in closing statement here. Uh, well, the classification of digital assets is quite common, uh, quite commonplace. Many classification efforts are only one dimensional and confuse traditional investors by mixing crypto assets and investable tokens directly with the protocols behind them. Convala said. Exec also, exec also expressed. Uh, confidence that 21 shares collaboration with CoinGecko, a major independent crypto data website, will allow newly proposed standard to appeal to both retail and institutional investors as well as policymakers across the world. So that's that right there. 20, CoinGecko and 21 shares proposed global crypto classification standard in like three tier of different levels. Let's go into some business news here. NFT, uh, NFT images of furry Birkin bags violated trademark rules. This is about NFT business. From Lucy Hooker, business reporter for BBC News, an artist who made an artist who made and sold digital images of Birkin handbags covered in fur violated trademark rights, and a Manhattan court has concluded the fashion giant Herms, which owns the luxury brand, sued Mason Rothschild after he created non fungible tokens or NFTs based on the famous bags. Herms. Uh, her, uh, said consumers would believe that the products were uh, officially associated with the bl uh, brand. The trademark, the, uh, the landmark case sets a precedent for other trials around NFTs. The jury awarded Herms 133000 in damages, rejecting Mr. Rothschild's argument that his products, which he began selling in 2021, were works of art commenting on the market of luxury for luxury goods and should be protected by laws governing free speech. A lawyer representing Mr. Rothschild said that it was a terrible day for artists and, and the First Amendment. Um, there has been a flurry interest. I mean, I mean, copyright rules are copyright rules, uh, or trademark rules. I mean, if you got a trademark on something and you're infringing on something that looks like you're, you know, what another entity has in a trademark and a copyright. Well, I mean, that's just that it doesn't matter if it's a, a piece of artwork or not. If it resembles, if it resembles something, then it falls under the law of trademark uh, violations that someone put a trademark on something for. Um, yeah, digital tokens are unique. I'm not going to go through what <laughs> NFTs means. Mithra Rothschild produced a series of images of the famous bag calling them Meta Birkins. One was covered in shaggy green fur. There was a version based on Van Gogh's Starry Night painting and an animation of a, uh, a fetus growing inside, a, uh, sorry, a fetus. Uh, growing, is that what it says? Uh, growing inside a transparent Birkin handbag, a play on the brand's smaller model of its uh, bag known as the Baby Birkin. The artist claimed his works were in the same vein as Andy Warhol's reproduction of Campbell's soup cans. Yeah, but again, like laws have evolved and changed. So, you know, Andy Warhol's uh, reproduction of Campbell's soup cans. Um, goes to say, right? Goes to say. But uh, if there's people in in uh, entities or, or familial ties to Andy Warhol's uh, estate or something, uh, maybe claiming royalties or something from this Campbell's soup cans thing. Um, maybe that can change for Campbell's going uh, approaching them. I don't know. The jury decided that they should be seen as consumer products and were therefore covered by trademark law. Oh, okay, right. Hearn said that Mithra Rothschild was a digital speculator who created his image of the bag as a get-rich-quick scheme. It paid over $1 million worth of Meta Birkins. Um, it said over $1 million worth of Meta Birkins have been sold since December 2021. The fashion house said it has plans to issue NFTs itself, which were constrained by Mr. Rothschild's actions. The court's decision will be closely watched by other brands seeking to clarify trademark rules around NFTs. That's that. NFT images of furry Birkin's bag violated trademark rules. NFTculture.com, NFT news, blue chip NFT capitulation. It's from uh, Natalie, writer reporter for... Um, NFT culture, so blue chip NFT capitulation. Well, the, world, uh, the world of NFTs has seen a lot of excitement and hype over the past few years with many blue chip NFT projects capturing the attention of collectors and investors alike. However, as the market has matured, many of these once popular NFT projects have fallen from their previous all times highs. One of the main reasons this decline is over uh, for this client is over minting a common issue in the NFT world. For example, Doodles, a popular NFT project, faced criticism over minting for over minting its tokens, leading to a drop in value in a move to the flow blockchain. Another factor contributed 
Uh, contributing to the decline of blue chip NFTs is the acquisition of successful projects by larger corporations. For example, Clonex, another popular NFT project, lost steam after um, RTF uh, KT. Uh, the company behind it was acquired by Nike in a record-breaking deal. This acquisition brought a lot of attention to the NFT world, but also raised questions about the future of the project and its tokens. In addition to these specific issues, the lack of long-term direction and utility is another factor contributing to the death of blue-chip NFTs. Time-based NFTs such as vFriends and Proof are confusing for users as utility of the tokens will eventually expire. This lack of clarity has made it difficult for these um products to maintain their popularity and value the general lexicon about humans being inherently fickle the general lack of innovation and the true utility in the volatility of nft projects is in general are also contributing factors to the death of blue chip nfts the nft world is still in its infancy and is consistently evolving making it difficult for projects to maintain their popularity and value over time and an nft capitulation uh, this refers to a general decline in the NFT market where the value of NFT projects decreases and investors sell off their holdings. This often occurs when there is a loss of confidence in the NFT marketplace and a general perception that NFT projects are overvalued. NFT capitulation can also be caused by factors such as saturation of the market, a lack of innovation and true utility, and the general volatility of the NFT market. The decline in value during NFT capitulation can result in a slowdown in sales and reduced interest from investors and collectors, leading to a contraction uh, in the market. This is imp uh, important for NFT projects to have a solid foundation and clear long-term direction in order to avoid or weather NFT capitulation. Despite these challenges, the love for art remains a constant. In the NFT world, many collectors and investors are still drawn to NFTs for their unique ability to own and display digital art, making it a fascinating and ever-evolving market. The death of blue-chip NFTs is simply a natural part of the market's evolution and will likely lead to the rise of new innovation uh, innovative par uh, products in the future while the death of the blue chip nfts may seem like negative development it is simply a sign of the nfts market's evolution and growth the challenges faced by these products serve as a reminder of the importance of a long-term direction innovation and utility of the nft world and will likely lead to the rise of new and exciting projects in the future um this goes on and on a lack of real utility is the main issue you can read through this I'm, um uh which because it's, it's um yeah but which NFT projects will get a second life? Um, you can read through that as well. I'll, I'll speak on this on utility is the main issue. Um, some projects are just art based and that's all it is. And some projects are like a token gated access to further content or a game um, or media uh, like that. So maybe a lack of utility, you know, for projects is also waning the NFT industry. But I mean, some can just be art. It's okay. It doesn't have to have utility behind it. Then it's sitting on the wall collecting dust for a painting or collecting intrinsic value if it's a famous painter or something like that. And how we do that now is by having digital NFT um, uh, screens as picture frames on our walls that display NFTs and artworks. So they can't be uh, lost or stolen, etc. like that um, right off the wall. Which NFT projects will get a second life? Uh, I guess we can close out the article reading this. As a result, many NFT projects lose their shine and eventually fade away. Um, everyone is always looking for the next shiny object. Uh, this combined with the waning interest is the death of many NFT projects. Um, I've seen up and downs to, to collections. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's that for this from NFT Culture, a blue chip NFT capitulation article here. I've got a few articles left here to read before closing out the stream for the day. All you need to know about ChatGPT, the AI chatbot that's got the world talking and tech giants clashing. This is from Ryan Brown. The key points here are uh, schools, corporate boardrooms, and social media are abuzz with talk about ChatGPT, the artificial intelligence chatbot developed by AI startup Co uh, OpenAI. The tool is capable of taking written inputs from users and producing human-like responses from poetry in the style of William Shakespeare to advice on what to do for a child's birthday party. It has also sparked a tense clash between Google and Microsoft, two of the world's largest tech companies. Uh, what is ChatGPT? I asked the buzzy artificial intelligence chatbot, which uh, has ignited conversations in schools, corporate boardrooms, and social medias to explain itself. In its own description, ChatGPT is an AI-powered chatbot developed by OpenAI based on the GPT generative uh, pre-trained transformer language model. It uses a deep learning techniques to generate human-like responses to text uh, inputs in a conversational manner. The tool is uh, the talk of the business world has been mentioned in earnings calls by management from a range of companies, including oil giants, banks, and even the uh, industrial behemoth Caterpillar. 
Uh, let's see, it has also sparked concerns over potential abuses in classrooms. Students have used ChatGPT to generate entire essays while hackers have begun resting, uh, testing it to write malicious code. So what is ChatGPT exactly? Here's a simple guide on all you need to know. Um, it's an AI chatbot developed by San Francisco-based San Francisco -based startup OpenAI. It was co-founded in 2015, uh, 2015 by Elon Musk and Sam Altman and is backed by well-known investors, most notably Microsoft. It is one of the several examples of generative uh, AI. These are tools that allow users to enter written prompts and receive new human-like text or images and video generated by AI. Prior examples include Dolly, a text-to-image program from OpenAI that garnered attention from people captivated by its ability to come up with realistic, often absurd pictures that match people's text descriptions. Lensa, an app based on the open source AI project Stable Diffusion, has been used to turn selfies into illustrious self-portraits inspired by everything from sci-fi to anime. In the ChatGPT's case, the service is a text-based tool that can produce human-like responses to users' requests from poetry and the stuff. Yeah, we already read about that. Okay, let's uh, not cycle back through. <laughs> um, so what's so special about it? It's powered by a large by a large language model or LLM, meaning it's programmed to understand human language and generate responses based on large corp uh, on a large corpora of data. ChatGPT's LLM is called G GPT 3.5. It's an upgrade of OpenAI's GPT 3 language model with a whopping 175 billion parameters. GPT 3 is one of the largest and most powerful language processing AI models to date. And what makes ChatGPT so impressive is that its ability to produce human-like responses thanks to no, uh, thanks in no small part to the vast amount of data it's trained on. What's exciting is that the responses are more and more human-like. So what you're seeing is things we did not think computers could do before. Jeffrey Wong, Global Chief Innovation Officer at professional services firm EY, told CNBC. Another thing that differentiates ChatGPT is the ability to log context from users, earlier messages in a thread, and... Um, and use it to form responses later in the conversation. And why is it so popular? No generative AI application has quite managed to achieve the kind of influence and virality that ChatGPT has. It's been a subject of countless memes and the talk of business community in the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland last month. Chinese tech giant Baidu made its own version called Ernie Bot. The chat uh, bot signed up one million in the first five in the five in the five days after its release, according to a December 5th tweet but from Altman. By January, ChatGPT has amassed 100 million monthly active users only two months into its launch, making it the fastest growing consumer application in history, according to a UBS note published last week. It took TikTok nine months to reach 100 million users and Instagram two and a half years. January 31st was the biggest ever day for ChatGPT with its website garnering record 28 million daily visits, according to data from SimilarWeb that was up 165% from a month ago. Now, one reason for ChatGPT's popularity is accessibility. The service is public to anyone via the a OpenAI uh, website, and its potential applications ranging from school homework to legal briefs. I think there's a premium option also that's a paid option uh, next to the uh, free option version. When we come out of pandemics, you typically see this burst of creativity. He said the biggest example is after the Black Plague, there was this renaissance, the burst of creativity across the board. Why it's got tech giants clashing. Microsoft is betting billions on ChatGPT's owner, OpenAI. In late January, the tech titan announced a multi-year, multi-billion dollar investment with the OpenAI. Microsoft declined to disclose a specific dollar amount. Um, let's see. On Thursday, Microsoft held a press event where it announced new AI-powered updates to its Bing search engine and an Edge browser. Altman confirmed Microsoft has incorporated some of OpenAI's GPT 3.5 language technology into Bing. Uh, that was a day after uh, Google unveiled its own response to ChatGPT calling, uh, called Bard AI. The company plans to start rolling Bard out in Google search in the coming weeks. ChatGPT is seen as a threat to Google. Rather than turn to the web re, uh, search pioneer for your most burning questions, people could rely on ChatGPT. Google has was actually uh, early to the advanced conversational AI game through the launch of its own large language model called Lambda in 2021. It uh, missed the boat on launching its own consumer product based on Lambda in hopes to change that with uh, Bard. This, uh, which is powered by the language model. So how good is ChatGPT really? It has limitations. Uh, responses from the chat uh, chatbot can contain factual inaccuracies. For example, it can invent fictitious uh, historical names in books that don't exist or fail to solve certain math problems. The open-ended aspects of these models are a double-down edged sword, a double, sorry, a double-edged sword. 
Uh, Will Williams, Vice President of Machine Learning, Brit uh, British AI startup Speed uh, Speechmatics, told CNBC, uh, end quote, on one hand, there's a high level of flexibility and fluidity of interactions and engaging conversation as possible on almost any topic. On the other hand, you never quite know when the model is making contract with uh, make contact with for, uh, reality and not overconfidently hallucinating. Um, I'm going to skip through here a little bit. Um, let's see. For now, experts say generative AI isn't yet capable of achieving human-like general intelligence. Artificial intelligence, or AGI, is often considered the holy grail of the AI community. It most commonly refers to the ability of, intelligent, uh, of an intelligent agent to understand or learn any intellectual task that a human being can. Plenty of companies hope to achieve that from OpenAI's to uh, OpenAI to Google's DeepMind, the possibility of GPT-3 have already led to excitement about OpenAI's next gen, uh, generation LLM model, GPT-4, tampering expectations. Uh, OpenAI's Altman pushed back on the hype surrounding GPT-4, stating in a recent interview with Strictly VC that people were begging to be disappointed. <laughs> okay, it's probably, it's probably like some um, minor improvements and investments here and there that maybe um, wouldn't otherwise be noticed. And GPT-4. All you need to know about GPT, the AI chatbot that's got the world talking and tech giants clashing. All right, let's see here. Let's go into some stock news. Disney stock rises after streaming losses narrow in first quarter. This is from Alexandra Canal, senior reporter. Disney DIS reported a quarterly results after the bell on Wednesday that showed a beat on both the top and bottom lines as demand for the company's theme parks soared during the holiday period. As expected, Disney Plus subscribers showed a slight dip in the first quarter due to the absence of the Indian Premier League cricket tournament and its Indian brand Disney Plus Hotstar. Streaming losses narrowed to $1.1 billion in Q1 against a loss of $1.5 billion in the fourth quarter ahead of the company's previous guidance as Disney ad supported tier and recent prices increased help pair losses wednesday's upbeat results served as the company's first earnings report since ceo bob Iggers returned to the company in november shares of disney were up as much as three percent following this news here are disney's first quarter results compared to wall street's consensus estimates as compiled by bloomberg in the revenue 23.51 billion dollars versus 23.4 billion dollars expected um let's see adjusted earnings per share eps uh, 0.99 per, uh, 0.99 are basically a dollar versus 0.75 percent, uh, not percent, uh, 75 cents expected. Disney Plus total subscribers 161.8 million versus 164 million expected. Park ex uh, parks experience and consumer product revenue 8.74 billion versus 8.80 uh, 8.08 percent uh, billion expected. Um, after a solid quarter, we are embarking on a significant transforma uh, transformation, one that will maximize the potential of our world-class creative teams and our unparalleled brands and franchises. C uh, Disney CEO Bob Iger said in their earnings release, we believe that the work we are doing to reshape our company around creativity while reducing expenses will lead to sustained growth and profitability in our streaming business better uh, position and to better position us to weather future disruption and global economic challenges and deliver value to uh, for our shareholders. Um, last month, Disney announced long-awaited updates to its parks reservation system and an annual pass holders program following intense backlash from consumers over lengthy wait times and sky-high ticket prices. Uh, Disney faces a rough 2022 as shares slid our face of a rough 2022 as shares slid 45 percent marking the worst annual stock performance for the company since 1974 the stock is up more than 20 percent year to date heading uh into earnings um yeah on the park side of business operating income soared to 3.05 billion the news uh the, uh the upswing comes after the theme park division missed expectations in q4 as recession fears pressured the consumer so a lot of this on a, is also on a macroeconomic level obviously um you know like everything was shut down during covid and disney was shut down but yeah disney stock rises after streaming losses narrow in the first quarter this last article i have here is also from yahoo finance i'm going to close out the stream for the day and i'll be back on monday with the latest news Investors assessing over AI is the latest symptom of the Amazon disease morning brief. So we're going to learn about what the Amazon disease is. From Miles Upland, head of news at Yahoo Finance, this article first appeared in the morning brief. 
Uh, today's newsletter is by Miles Upland, and uh, another day, another newsletter about artificial intel intelligence. As my colleague Julie Hyman wrote yesterday, the market obsession with anything AI is starting to feel a little 2017, the year when anyone and everyone began tracking blockchain technology onto an idea. The speed of infatuation with AI chatbots is, and all associated innovations has been stunning. On Tuesday, the New York Times published a story on the efforts being undertaken by Meta Platforms Meta to avoid falling behind in the race to integrate AI tools into literally any business idea the lead uh, brings us way back to critical uh, to a critical moment for the company two weeks before OpenAI's ChatGPT went live uh, online in November 2022 as known as about three months ago on uh, Monday Alphabet uh, Google announced its new chat job named Bard uh, Tuesday uh, Microsoft announced its uh, yeah so we already went through this right on the last article uh, as big tech continues sorting through its decisions to overhire during an overhyped future of work uh, phase after the pandemic, it seems AI projects are uh, a sure way to lock in a growth budget for 2023. As big tech, uh, yeah, okay, in the stock market it has become uh, table stakes that something strange is about to uh, is happening in the stock market because of some hyped announcement around artificial intelligence, leading the charge for speculative investors. Bets on AI capabilities are stocks like Soulhound, AI, uh, SOUN, and C3.AI, which have both roughly doubled this year. And we surely cannot be more than a few weeks away until a certain movie theater operator begins bragging about its AI investments. That's a, obviously a joke or something like that. On the flip side, we find names like Chegg, CHGG, the online educator platform, defending its market position against the threat of chatbots that in the grand set vision for these new technologies could render doing something as old fashioned as taking a class to learn something obsolete. Hype cycles in culture, uh, investing in elsewhere are not a new phenomenon. I mean, obviously we kind of saw that with um, like GameStop stop uh you could get like uh what was it, it was like the um crypto bets or stock bets or something like that through reddit like pumped like the game stop stock up um so you know all you have to do is just get together and uh, make a hype all while there are timeless influences underwriting the current infatuation with ai a more modern development also helps us situate this current mania speaking on bloomberg's odd lots podcast earlier this week steve eisman of the big short fame some readers may be more familiar with Steve Carell's work playing a version of Iceman in the 2015 movie outlined what he calls the Amazon disease. And we think this offers a great uh, heuristic for understanding the basis uh, for so many of the market's recent bull cases that overhyped flawed business models. Winning small portions of big markets has been the consensus framework for investing in high growth businesses. What I mean by the Amazon disease is that when Amazon became public, there was a lot of skepticism that this would work. And Amazon had basically conquered the world, Eisman said. And so people are always looking for the, Am uh, for the next Amazon when, they, when the sell ride writes a research report. Um, to me, I mean, it's just like, um, you know, you see things like Microsoft and, and uh, Google or Microsoft, for example, you know, whatever it is that investing into these uh, um, AI technologies, um, that to me is like um, with the growth of industry and technology uh, for me, not financial advice, but maybe I'd look to go pick up more um, Microsoft stock, more Google stock, things like that for the long haul. I'm not trying to look for some new shiny uh, relic that is just not proven yet. Besides OpenAI, because there's so much money pouring into it. I'm not sure. I think OpenAI is a, a private company. I don't think they're publicly traded. I'll have to look into that, though. Because that might be something to look into. If OpenAI is private, has plans to go public, uh, something to keep an eye on. But I don't know. I just don't know right now. So don't take my word on it. And the first sentence, the TAM is huge, which means the total addressable market is huge. Uh, yeah. Eisman flags open door open a D SPAC SPAC that came public via Chamath uh, social capital. I don't really know what that is. I'm gonna skip over that. As Eisman said, there's no question that housing is huge. So if you look at open door and you say, um, well, the housing market in the United States is, I don't know, a trillion or to whatever it is, a two trillion market. Eisman said, if open door gets 1% of that market, the stock is huge. I remember an investment banker telling me during the 2019 e-mini IPO boom that saw companies like Uber, Lyft, Zoom, and Peloton go public. 
that all you do is pick the companies with the biggest TAMs or total addressable market and bet on those. Take this logic a step further back and we find a dynamic that often shapes which companies in which sectors end up being the most enthusiastically funded by the venture community. So um, while the recent hype around ChatGPT AI has, was an associated variance of algorithmically enhanced task completed uh, completion may appear to have blossomed from nowhere fast, there are longer run investment culture forces at play. And like so many dynamics in the modern business world, they lead back to wanting to be like Jeff Bezos. So that's that right here from investors obsessing over AI has, is the latest symptom of the Amazon disease morning brief uh, article here. All right, so that's, uh, yeah, that's all I got. That's all I've got. If you're on the YouTube side, please do subscribe, turn on the bell notifications right here to Blockchain Tech and Finance. All of these articles are in the description box below on this video, on the recap. And I'll see you all back on Monday. Throw your comments in there, what you feel is important, and your feedbacks. And I'll note of it right here on the streams. Cheers. Ciao. Peace be with you. Have a great and safe rest of your day, weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. Ciao.